Well, hello again. We are back with the Rustin. Oh dear. We have broken parts. Let's see what we can do. Ah. Welcome to the man cave. Let the games begin. So we're joined by the float which come out of there and there's meant to be a needle. It's hard to demonstrate, well it isn't hard to demonstrate because I have got, if you remember, I have got a PB8 which has the same carburetor as this. This rod, I've got to try and do this one handed, I ain't got the phone in the tripod, but this rod basically should go all the way through. Let me get in my pocket, I've took the float and the needle out of my PB8. See, that rod, as there's meant to be a rod, go right through the middle of that. That's the float out of my PB8. And what goes through the middle of that, which we are totally missing because it had rotted away, is this rod. So this rod is missing. So, and that goes through this way, actually. I'll show you, that goes through there, right? But obviously it sits that way up. Whoops, sorry, my camera skills are mint today. That sits that way up here. And then that sits, if I can get you down here, on that little seat and to dumb See, the float goes on and when the float lifts up, it just lifts slightly. It lifts slightly to, well that isn't because the point is trying to come through the bottom, but you get the gist. I can't really do this one handed very well. Yeah, and when that lifts up, them little arms lift up, allowing petrol to come through. But all I've got, oops, as we've dropped it, all I've got is this collar which is this collar here. So we need to make one of these rods. Now, there you go, let's get focus. So how are we gonna do that? Well, on the wonders of eBay, I bought some brass rod here. I have cut a piece a little bit longer than what we need. So what we've really got to do, trying to do this one hand is not easy. Oops, this new bit of rod does fit nice and snug. Where is it? Yeah, that new bit of rod does fit nice and snug in there. Of course, you want a nice tight push fit, so that's not a problem. So what we need to do is we need to put a point on this bit of brass like that. Now, well, a lot of the engineers among you will have lathes and all kinds of things. Well, we're man cave. We're cater this channel's catering for people that may not have all the special gear to do these things. So I'm going to show you how to put a point on there. Now, I know you're going to say, oh, it's not going to be 100% accurate. Well, to be honest with you, the whole engine's not 100% accurate. The metering system is a point going into that hole. So, um, yeah, it's crude. Uh, we're talking 1920s technology here, so nothing was that accurate. And these were very temperamental carbs on these old Rustons in the first place. So we're going to get in the shed, and I'm going to show you, or try to. <laughs> I say show you, that might not work. But I have an idea that I've never tried before of how I think I can get a good point on there. Um, using basic bench grinder and a drill. So let's have a look and see what we can do. Back in a minute. So we have got a drill. We're going to put our brass rod in the drill. A bit of spinny. Now I'm hoping I can turn the grinder on and we can go on the side of the grinder like so with the drill going 
and that should hopefully grind us a point on there. Will this work? I have no clue. So I'm going to roughly hold on here. So I've really got to come in from this angle. If I lay that original float here, we need to sort of come in here. So if I come in here, we should be able to put our point on there. I ain't quite got to go straight. I've got to go a tiny bit over. Now, don't laugh at this. It's probably going to not work. So let's spin the grinder on. And let's see if we can get some sort of point on there. If this works, it'll be a miracle. Wow, well, looky, looky there. Where are we? We have a point. Are all points... Whoops, uh, where are I? Are all points anywhere near similar? Do you know that ain't far out? Them points are not far out though. I reckon we need a little bit longer point. We'll have another little nibble. Let me come on the back side of this. Oh, fuck me, that's a point. Now I think, now I've gone on the back side of that where the disc was a bit better. Where are our points? Come on, there you are. I think we have pretty much the same sized point on there. Now I reckon if I get a bit of emery paper and run the drill in the emery paper, because this is brass, that's nice and soft, we should be able to shine that point up. And then we will have our new needle. So... Let's get some emery paper and see how we get on with it. Back in a minute. So what we have here is a bit of, what is this? 800 wet and dry look. So let's just run that along there. Bearing in mind this is brass, that should polish up quite easily. This is Hillbilly Engineering, Engineering Man Cave style. Now I know the engineers among you are going to be like, what is that man doing? But when you're the lion in the woods and all you've got is what you've got, you have to improvise. But I think, but I think for a machined point, a home machined point. Come on, get focused. Get focused, camera. I think for a home machined point, that isn't too bad at all. There you go, look at that. I think we're done quite well there. And that will go on that seat nicely. So we'll take him out the drill. And there we have... Our point we've put on that bit of brass. Nice and shiny, no gouges. In fact, that's better than this original steel one, which over the years has actually worn a ledge in there, look. So, because all this to basically do is it fits in a slightly tapered hole. So it's, it's very crude. It's very crude fuel metering, but it'll work. So, yeah. So what we're going to do now is we're going to press this collar on to get the height right and then we should have a completed float needle so let me go get that collar I've left it around the other shed we'll get this in the vise and see if we can tap that through to um, get the right distance so back in a minute so I haven't quite finished yet what I'm going to do I'm going to put our seat in here <laughs> 
and gently nip that in the vice because we need to make sure gentle because that's brass we need to make sure that this point goes in and seats now to make sure that seats I'm going to put this back in the drill get some valve grind and paste put a little bit of that on the end there's a little bit of valve grind paste on there where are we where are you cameraman there we go so we'll put that in the seat and give it a little spin and that should clean and marry in that needle to that seat a little more paste Go the other way. There we go. Let's give that a wipe off. You can actually see where that's now. You can actually see where that's now started to actually seat into the seat. So brass on brass, that should grind itself in. Oh yes, that's... Yeah, we've got a nice little ring around there now where that's actually lapped itself in. So that's lapped into this seat. So now what we need to do is replicate this by putting that collar over our new bit of brass. So let's get the bit of brass out the drill. And here is our collar. We nip the voice slightly. Have I got a big enough voice here for this job? There you go. You want to put a lot of force on that. Now we need to tap that through. Can you see what we're doing there, Mr. Cameraman? There we go. We need to tap this through. Look how easy that's going. That is a lovely. Oh, that is a lovely friction fit, that. Beautiful. So we won't have to solder that. Now how much have we got to go? We've got to go a little bit more yet. Look, see that? We've got to come here. So let's just come right to that edge. So we're not giving that collar too much stick. But we don't want to have to push it back a little. We're not quite there yet. Look, we need a little bit more couple more hits what are we like no not quite I'm doing little hits because I don't want to go too much because I don't want to ruin our point by having to push it backwards we want a tiny bit more I think if I come here, look, we can see that we're not far out. I think we're actually this is the original pin with the bra with the metal through it. Oh we've made the one with the brass. So I think flange for flange one more tiniest of hits. Yep. Perfect. That is absolutely perfect. So we now have a good needle, which we have made out of a bit of brass stock. I think that's 
four four mil it was just a 30 centimeter length of um brass stock which you can get off ebay for about three pound fifty delivered and it happened to be the right size to go through this pin so we can make up a new one of these perfect and that should go over here's the float out of our pb8 so i've got to repair the float next with some tube i've got there you go our float fits over our new needle we've made so there we go we've made a new needle up perfect rust and hornsby fans everywhere will be impressed with the man cave solution and there we go so here we have it all that is our new Ah, oh, you can see that better now. Where are you? Let me get this camera zoomed out a bit. Let me get it zoomed out. Hang on, guys. There we go. If I get zoomed out and put the camera up level, you'll see how that works. So your, your seat screws into your car body. As your foot lifts, there you go. You can see it now. Look. See them little arms lift up. When you float land on it, that lifts the arms up, which lifts that little rod up. Yeah? Let petrol in. As your float sink, it pushes down on that. And but obviously, this is held at the top through a guide. I don't wiggle about that. But basically, that's how it works. I'm trying to show you. There you go. So as your float floats, your float is down there. So your fuel is now on, and as you lift the float up, that sinks and goes off. There you go. Got to remember, that's full of paste in there, so I haven't cleaned that jet out yet, because i still got valve grind and paste in, so that's probably why it's a bit sticky. But yeah, that's how it works, and that's how it will work, I'm sure. Right. So that's pretty much done the float i'm going to do tonight when i get home so that'll be a separate video but what we could do now is my roll pins have turned up so we can repair that magneto shaft so did you guys want to see that magneto shaft repaired because if you do we can go around the other shed or i can bring it no, i'll bring it around here actually and we can get our new roll pins and fix that gear back on that mag shaft so yeah, I'll do that now. Make a bit more of an interesting video for you guys. Sorry about my waffling on. Sorry about my hillbilly fix, but it seems to have worked. So, um, yeah, let me go get them bits, and I'll be back. Right, as promised, here we have our magneto shaft. I did clean all this up with a wire wheel and freed all this end off, because this is how you set your time, and of course, um, obviously, you can only get it 180 degrees either way on that gear so we're gonna to have to set the time and by adjusting that to where we want it and there's the lock nut on the bottom which does work so yeah we've got this freed up but this end is what we've got to worry about we've got to put this gear on which is the one what came off and pin go through see where them holes are but that said, it was a taper pin. I don't have any taper pins, so I'm thinking, can we use a roll pin? First things first, make sure you get this on. Because if you put your cog on, then you ain't got that on, which is the bit what seats in the engine. You're going to be in a world of hurt. So we mustn't forget to put this bit on first. But I need to make sure I've got a roll pin out of my little selection box here that's roughly the right size so let me have a dig about right it goes in that end nice i think this roll pin because that will close up a little that roll pin and i'm hoping that will close up enough to go into it does so although that's a taper pin i think this roll pin will actually do the job for us I know that might be a bit crude, but we can always knock it out and start again. We're not going to break nothing, are we? 
So how am I going to do this? I don't want to put that tooth in the... Are we starting to go through this hole? I don't want to give that tooth a lot of stick, you see. We've got a nice snug fit. Ah! Right, that is... Yeah, that is now starting to go through. So I think, or I hope, if it don't work, we can just knock it out and start again. Ah! There you go. That roll pin has now pushed right through there, look. So we need to get that flush. There we go. That roll pin is through that end and it's spitting tight in that end. So if we now just grind that off, we will have a pin fitted. So there we have it. Without any further ado, we have our roll pin, which has took place of a taper pin. The purists among you are going to go, well, that ain't right. You should have driven 50 miles and 50 miles back to find a taper pin. Well, you aren't going to never see this. It's buried inside the engine. There's no way on earth that is going to fall out of there because being a split roll pin with the split in them, not a solid one, that actually has closed itself up so that's in there with a lot of tension in that shorter end and in that fatter end it seemed to have held itself because it hasn't pushed in that end so much so this is you know brilliant we have now got a magneto shaft which is done so that's the end of this video guys hope you enjoyed our little putting the thing back on the shaft and fixing that and making that new carb needle which are totally gone like i said the old carb needle had totally totally disintegrated i didn't even have an old one as a pattern i had to borrow this one out of my pb8 and obviously we made this one to match it and yeah it seems to be right yes that's a tiny bit too long i'd rather it too long than too short i can always grind the end off but that'll be once I've finished. Bits in. One last look at that. One last look at this. And there you go. Man cave done for the day. Right. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye for now.